such a joy to be here this morning to worship God and to be in his presence. We are living a very interesting life. Yes. Let's not think that only in US we will have an interesting life. India is boring. <laughs> Wherever we might be on the face of the earth, it is interesting, it is vibrant. What makes the difference is God. It's the presence of God that makes the difference. It's not about where we come from or where we live, what's the square feet area of our house, nothing matters. Whether we live in a small house or a big house or in a palace or in a hut, nothing makes the difference except the Spirit of God that is in us. Because He is the source of all joy. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. He is a good God. He is a great, big, wonderful God. I want to read a verse about that from Psalm chapter 95. Psalm chapter 95 verse 3. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. Yes, for the Lord is the great God. Is not a great God, but he is the one and only great God. The great King above all gods. Gods which people of the earth think they are gods which are made out of idols. Uh, made out of stone and wood and whatever its composition might be, even plaster of Paris, even idols of Mary and baby Jesus, is all other gods. They are not our gods. Amen. Our God is a great God. He's a wonderful God who loves us, who is mindful of us. And he knows us by our name. Even before we were born, he knew us. Even before we, he saw our unformed body. That's what the psalmist says in 139. <coughs> Shall we look to him this morning? Shall we just turn our eyes upon God, look to him and pray and ask God for grace? Lord, we pray that you will speak to us, Lord. Give us grace, Lord, to hear your voice. Help us to, Lord, know you more. Help us to know the riches of glory, Lord Master. The riches that you have in heavens above. Lord, everything that surpasses, Lord, uh, the things of this world, which are so temporary, help us to understand who you are and what you have in store for us. Give you all the honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So often we are caught up with the things around us, the immediate environment, our family, our job, our business, our studies, and our education, um, whatever, I mean, that we are dealing with in everyday life is what our complete focus is on. And if you go a little higher than that, our environment, our territory, you know, Orchid Springs is a big community uh, where we live, where we uh, have, uh, you know, large numbers of people living there. If you move up a little bit and see the whole of, you know, Ananagar and, you know, Chennai, and if you go a little bit higher than that, you see India as a nation. Uh, we are Indians. And, but that is by the grace of God. Uh, so if you go a little bit more higher and see uh, the whole world, the earth, the human beings, you just imagine in your mind's eye the globe and all the people in it. That's how God sees from above. You know? uh, 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 just a view from somewhere in space can see you know, the blue... Uh, pink, a blue, blue ball called earth. So seeing from God's point of view and in this large cosmos that he has created even beyond that which you know scientists have and even undiscovered areas are still there. So God is so much high above and he's seeing all these things. He has created huge things which we cannot even understand. This morning I, as I was driving out I saw one man you know, doing a, you know, paying obeisance to the sun. I thought, he, I, I, for a moment, I thought he's looking at a very small star. He thinks that that's the biggest, that's the greatest, and he needs that. That he thinks that that need, needs to be worshipped. But no, that's a very small star. There are much huge, you know, stars hundred times the size of the sun. 
so uh, when are we going to find that and worship that it's not possible so the the tradition the superstitions are so you know so absurd how can we if we worship the sun then you have to worship the moon also but they don't do that then you have to worship everything but all this is all the creation of god but god demands that we worship him alone that's why he says he is a great king above all gods so when we see look at the heavens and all its glory the earth is so small and it's a small fallen world where we, god has put in put us in and that he has done for a specific purpose if you want to see the framework of what god is about what he, why he has created the earth and all these things we can read that from ephesians chapter 1 Ephesians chapter 1 it's a bit of a long passage from verse 3 onwards up to verse 14 praise be to the god the father of our lord jesus christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in christ for he chose us in him before the creation of the world this is something amazing Th- these are some things that we just have to take it by faith we cannot reason and see how it came to be but god in his immense wisdom has some- done something beautiful for he chose us who is he here it is god the father god the father chose us in him who is him in jesus he has chosen us in jesus before the creation of the world isn't that amazing we are not we are existing of course maybe for the last i mean i'm existing for the last 43 years i don't know each of you you'll know how long you've been existing <laughs> but you know in god's uh, grand plan for us he knew us even before that even before the creation of the world even before he created the sun and the moon and the stars for god he chose us in christ before the creation of the world for what purpose to be holy and blameless in his sight that's the way he wanted the world to be the perfect world but he also knew that you know man will fail in love he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through jesus christ so we are his adopted sons god the father and the begotten son jesus is his own son but we all together through christ we have become his adopted sons so that is our status so many times we don't remember because we are caught up in so much of this world and all the struggles that we go through that we sometimes can lose identity of who we are and why we are on this earth so this morning this question is what is the purpose of me existing in this world at this point of time so what is the purpose god has a purpose he has a plan i said in the in god's grand plan that is from eternity to eternity which we cannot comprehend with our you know simple finite minds god has a plan for every one of us and he chose us as we read there he chose us even before the creation of the world so what is the purpose to praise to the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given us in the one he loves he wants us to have a close relationship with him so many times because of the things and the cares of this world we are pushed away from god we think that god is there so that he might change my situation so that he might heal my disease uh, so that my family will be blessed i'll have a good life i'll have money i'll have a good home nothing wrong with that all that is part of god's blessing but our identity is not in these things our identity is not in the miracles it's not in the wonders it's not in anything else but in christ himself that we are his children primarily we are his sons and daughters whatever we might go through uh, whatever be the struggles that we go through in this life will not change our identity in christ so that remains 
so when that remains everything else will fall into place we will not be perturbed will not be anxious will not um, you know just be disparate and you know we will not die die in the sense we will not die in our situation like what we heard this morning god will resurrect everything that is dead that is seemingly dead in our lives when we have our focus on god everything else will f- fall in place so many times we need god for our requirements so when that is the only purpose of god we have limited god to a great extent we have brought him made him very small but in the hugeness in the vastness of his glory in the vastness of his creation uh, this is so important he has chosen us he has chosen us and we are so unique for him that's why he has created every one of us so differently some may be light some may be dark but you know the the features are so different every person is created uniquely every person has got you know their own thumbprint i don't think you know anybody uh, the two people with the same thumbprint and the dna the dna is always uh, unique different so it can never be you know there are no two of us in this world so when we look at all the heavens and the glory when we begin to praise and worship him you know we see a different dimension of god that does not limit him at all that's when we go, when we go into his presence we see the expanse of his might and his power and his presence that is so amazing for us and if we go reading into this chapter um in him we have redemption through his blood in him we have redemption the first thing was he has chosen us in him and in him we have redemption because there is no other place no other person no other creation of god nothing else can give us this redemption except jesus except the blood except the blood of christ we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of god's grace because we cannot make ourselves good we cannot make ourselves acceptable to god we cannot do anything that will satisfy him and say okay now he is perfect now i can love him no we will never be perfect we are always on the process of getting to becoming more and more striving to become perfect but we never become uh, 100% sinless there's no one who can claim and say i'm completely sinless if a man says he is uh, sinless who is he he is a liar so this forgiveness of sins god has graciously brought us through christ without which we cannot access we don't have any access to god so this great work which god has done through christ on the cross that saves us changes our heart changes our life and gives us um, gives us a relationship with jesus is something that we need to work on every day of course we were saved one day but every day we need to renew our relationship with god it's not that uh, we never commit sin but even though we are believers baptized speaking in tongues and in the midst of all this you know there might be some attitudes which need to be changed some areas where god's you know god's uh, intervention is required in our lives so every day we are getting more and more closer to god more and more like christ so in this all in this process what he has done for us in his goodness is he has made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in christ the mystery the mystery is that we could know god we were once alienated from god we did not know god but in at the right time christ came to die for us and bring us into this fold we were once in darkness once outside the kingdom of god once in the kingdom of the devil our father was the devil but now he has redeemed us by his precious blood and he has brought us into his kingdom this is the mystery that was revealed that we as gentiles non jewish people can have access to this god is the mystery which god has revealed through christ and all this 
uh, when it happens, verse 10, to be put into effect when the times have reached their fulfillment. When the times have reached their fulfillment. Times is, it says in plural, because every day the plan of God is getting fulfilled in our lives. Amen. We are once saved. Then the, the plan of God for our lives begin to unravel step by step. Step by step, he is bringing us closer and closer to him in, a, in our walk with Christ. But every day his plan is getting fulfilled in our lives. That's why when people say, you know, a better day is coming or, uh, you know, I'm waiting for a great blessing. No, there's nothing, nothing that is going to, one big boom that is going to happen one day. No, every day is a blessing. The Bible says this is the day that the Lord has made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Every day is a blessing. Every day the plan of God is at work in our lives. So you don't have to wait. There are some people who say, you know, wait for a great day, wait for a better day. But every day is a day of preparation. We might receive something big, something small, but every day if you have the presence of God in us, that itself is a blessing. I don't think there's any greater blessing than the presence of God that we can ever, you know, uh, be more joyful uh, than experiencing the presence of God in our lives. So, even today, it is getting fulfilled. That's what it says here. To be put into effect when the times have reached their fulfillment, to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. So we have come under Christ. So the plan of God is happening in our lives every day. But the only thing is that how much are we yielding to his plan? Sometimes there's a delay. Sometimes, you know, the work of God in our lives get delayed because we haven't yet fully surrendered ourselves to God. So the, the more and more we give ourselves, offer ourselves to him as a living sacrifice, the more and more his plan and purpose will get fulfilled in its time. If you go to Romans and chapter uh, 12. Therefore I urge you, brothers, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, for this is your spiritual act of worship, this is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So the more and more we give ourselves to the Lord and tell him, Lord, let your will be done in my life. I don't want to go based on my feelings, based on my desires, based on what I think is best for me. But I want to be in your presence and ask you, Lord, what is your choice for me? What is your will for my life? So when we come into that, you know, position and completely surrender ourselves and offer ourselves as a living sacrifice and say, Lord, I don't belong to me. I don't belong to myself. I don't care what the people think about me. When we say I don't belong to myself, you know, we always have an image to safeguard. We always want to know what the other person thinks about me. What will they think if I do this? If I don't have this, what will they think? Or if I have this, how will their per perception about me change? You know, these are huge battles in our lives which we encounter on a daily basis. Even the way we dress, uh, that doesn't mean that we need to be shabby and ugly. But our focus is not based on what other people think about us. But when I shift our focus to see what God thinks about me, and that's when everything changes. And that's when we begin to say, Lord, I don't belong to me, I belong to you. And what do you have to say about me? Then there is no pressure at all. We don't have to live up to something. We don't have to, you know, I mean, live like the Joneses, I think. That's what they say. We don't have to match up to anybody to prove to the world that, you know, I am so-and-so, I am this, I am that. So that removes everything. Don't think about what people are going to think about us. When we take that out of our mind, the plan of God is, is you know, very effective. Things begin to change. 
things begin to happen in our lives be transformed by the renewing of your mind so the mind is one one thing that you know is is the seat of all thought so all thoughts originate from the mind so if the mind is renewed the mind will give the necessary instruction to the body and so when we go on the road when somebody cuts us off we don't get mad at them anymore so even simple things like this is a renewal of the mind just a simple you know this but the result of a road rage can result in anything we can lose our peace we can lose our joy we we'll get into a fight lose our witness finally but when you are renewed in the mind we know what to do we know how where to ignore just we just forget about the whole thing because we are renewed in our mind so the transformation in the mind will help us to take the right decisions when we think right we will act right and when we do what is right uh, we can expect god's absolute blessings over us we will not fail it doesn't mean that we become more competitive than other people since we are uniquely made god has a unique plan for us so we don't need to ever compare with us, ourselves with somebody else and think oh they have done this they have gone to that level now i have to match up to that no not necessary because god's unique plan for every one of us is unique so there is no way we we have to compare anything with anybody at all so why should we you know force ourselves strain ourselves stress ourselves out and say and think you know i need to do this so that will be accepted no you are already accepted what will be the position we might be in what will be my be our status in life we are accepted by god if god himself has accepted us why should we care whether anyone accepts us or not there is no pressure there is no stress there is no need to get agitated about anything at all whether anybody likes us or not whether they appreciate us or not we have god's approval over our lives uh, that's enough for us so if you take the life of david you know when samuel came to anoint uh, the sons of one of the sons of jesse even he did not know who he was going to anoint if you turn to first samuel first samuel in chapter 16 this is how it begins the lord said to samuel how long will you mourn for saul since i have rejected him as king over israel even this see how god beautifully speaks to samuel how long will you mourn for saul i have a better plan why are you mourning mourning over saul so many times we mourn over so many things we feel we that we felt okay this is going to work out when then it didn't work out so we get stuck with that situation for a long time and we keep on you know replaying it in the mind and you know why didn't this happen why did this happen you know why we didn't we couldn't do that why did this not come uh, come through in my life so we can be in a mournful stage like samuel thinking about the past dwelling in the past but when we are renewed in the mind we don't look at the past we look at what god has in store for us and god will do something beautiful even the past is not a bad thing whatever we gone through in the past is not a bad thing god will use it for something good amen so when we when our minds are renewed we don't we have no regrets no regrets if there's anything that we can regret about it will be only our past life before we came to know christ once we are saved once we have come into the knowledge of god we baptized in him and all the old things are buried no more memory of the old things all the old things are buried we come up to live a new life we are a new creation all the old things are buried So the Lord told Samuel how long will you mourn for Saul since I have rejected him as king fill your horn with oil and be on your way i am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem i have chosen one of his sons to be the king so this is god's plan 
So when we are in his presence, when we uh, spend time in his presence, he will reveal what his will is for our life. We don't have to break our heads. We can be absolutely calm and composed and tell the Lord, Lord, let thy will be done in my life. And that is part of the Lord's prayer. Let thy kingdom come. Let thy will be done. So Samuel said, how can I go? Saul will hear about it and kill me. See, again, a negative thought comes to him. What will happen? But did he get killed by Saul? No, he didn't. The Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do. This is what we need in our lives. A clear instruction from God. How many times have we received a clear instruction from God? All the instructions from God are here on the word of God. So when we read it every day, he will teach us, he will show us what to do and what not to do. So what happens is God tells him, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do. What more do we need? Is there anything else that we need? When God says, I will show you what to do, there is no room for any doubt. There is no room for any disbelief or uh, there's no room for any faithlessness. We are full of faith. There's no fear. When God has told Samuel, I will show you what to do, then we just have to obey it. Sometimes, you know, we tell the Lord, show me what I must do. Then he tells you, okay, this is what you must do. But after that, we think twice. Oh, no, <laughs> this is not I wa what I wanted to do. This I did not imagine. This is not, this is not me. I cannot do this. You know, so many times that is our conclusion. But we keep seeking the Lord. Tell me what to do. I want to seek your face. I want to know your will. When the instruction comes, you know, we are not in a position. We don't find it very comfortable to obey. So he told uh, Jesse, he told Samuel, I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. How specific is this? Or how more specific can it get? There's nothing can be more specific than this, than the Lord telling Samuel, you are to anoint for me the one I indicate. How specific it is. This is how specific God can deal with our lives. So many times we are in so much of confusion, we don't know what to do. There's so much, can I do this or that, which will work out, which won't. There's so much of confusion because we have not spent enough time in the presence of God. When we spend time in the presence of God, read his word, there will be 100% there will be a definite instruction from God as to what we are to do. God never leaves us in a state of confusion. He is not a God who is not a God of chaos. He will never confuse us. He will never, you know, make us to be, uh, make us to stumble. He will give us very specific instructions. That's what God tells Samuel. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. Samuel did what the Lord said. Good. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, do you come in peace? Samuel replied, yes, in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. So, <clears throat> because Eliab was the firstborn, and normally the firstborn is dedicated to the Lord, and so Samuel concluded that Eliab should be the uh, person who is supposed to be anointed. But that was not God's plan. So sometimes we can get caught up in things like this, which, you know, naturally, in the natural mind, we think, okay, this must be the right thing to do. But when we pray, God will tell us, no, even though it appears to you naturally that this is the best solution that you can have, God says, wait, I will show you even more. 
But the Lord said to Samuel, do, consider his, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. So maybe Eliab was tall, hefty, you know, had the bearing of a king and all that. Okay, he thought, okay, this must be the right person for the job. But God said, no, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And during the worship, um, Stephen was talking about the, uh, the girl who was dead, that is the synagogue ruler's daughter. So the, all the people were, they, they concluded, okay, she is dead. You know, there's no way she can come back to life. So they, they might have been, you know, starting to prepare for the burial and things like that. You know, preparing the spices those days, the grave clothes and all that. There's no way they could have thought that she will ever come back to life. So that, that's how the people of the world were looking at it, And they were crying and wailing. And, but when Jesus came into the house, he put them all out. And he took with them only the mother and the father and the disciples. Because he knew that they are the people who needed to be there to see what God is going to do. So here... We see that man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So many times our conclusions are based on what we see, because our mind is not renewed. But when the transformation of the mind comes, we will be able to see things from a different perspective. What naturally other people see, if uh, by the grace of God, we don't see that all the time. That doesn't mean that we should never see naturally. But are we led by the Spirit of God to do this or not to do this? Here he was about to, you know, uh, turn the horn of oil over his head. I think God held back his hand at the last moment. So he didn't waste that oil on Eliab. So man looks at the outward appearance. He thought this might be the right guy. But God looks at the heart. And you know what God says there? Do not look, consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. This is a second rejection. The first one was Saul. Saul rejected. Uh, God rejected Saul. That's what we read in verse 1. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul since I have rejected him as king? So this person, Eliab, also I, I think uh, my imagination that he might also have been suitable for the kingship in Israel. But God saw that something was wrong with him. And only God knew what was it because Samuel couldn't find what was wrong with him. He thought he's good. He's got all the you know, necessary qualifications to be king. But God had rejected him. Maybe this is the second time, the second, uh, you know, the proposal. It looked good. The proposal looked very good. But the Lord rejected it. So we will know in our spirit that this is not the will of God for us. So God rejected him. And then he goes on. Then he calls the other sons now. Then Jesse called Abinadab and had him pass in front of Samuel. But, Sam, but Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen this one either. Praise God. Now there is no doubt now. He's very clear. The mind is transformed. When God spoke to him... His mind was transformed. Samuel's mind was transformed. And he very clearly knew that now he knew what the Spirit of God was telling him. Earlier he did not because he was seeing from his, from his eye of flesh. And he thought by his appearance this could be the man. But God said no. And now when uh, Abinadab passed, then <clears throat> Jesse then had Shama pass by. But Samuel said, nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel, but Samuel said to him, the Lord has not chosen these. This is the most amazing part of this passage, is the Lord has not chosen these. <clears throat> but earlier, if you read in 16.1, see the, the, the almost contradictory situation. Verse 1 it says, I have chosen one of his sons to be king. Who said this? God has said this. If God said it, then it is true. No one can change what God has said it. But when you come to verse um, 
ten, Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel. But Samuel said to him, "The Lord has not chosen these." So what do we do now? All the sons of Jesse have come, but the Lord has said that He is going to choose one of the sons of Jesse. Now what, what is he? What is he going to do? The next thing he is going to he has to check Mrs. Jesse, whether she is going to bear any more children that the Lord will choose. So sometimes you know. it's like we are proceeding the will of god sometimes it feels like we hit a blank wall but no it only feels like that that's when we know that that's when our faith is tested you know we are trusting in god so much we follow him following him reading his word seeking the face of the lord and we are moving the right direction yes but we feel that it, we hit a blank wall because god has told him i have chosen one of his sons to be king very clearly and here we see jesse had seven of his sons pass before samuel samuel said to him the lord has not chosen these at that time he did not know there's one more son in the field samuel did not know that this is when our faith gets even more stronger we have some hurdles to cross of course by the grace of god we keep crossing them at point one point we feel okay this is impossible impossible to cross there's no way out this is just impossible that is when we need to exercise a little bit more of our faith and that comes again faith comes from hearing the word of god and that is from the bible so that strength that extra bit of strength we need to put our trust in god our faith has to increase over there all these things are easy one by one everybody is coming yes we are hearing god and god is saying no this is not the one and we know in our spirit no not this not this not this not this all the seven over gone now what do we do what 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 samuel is going to do is he going to come back another day or what is he going to do so he asked jesse are these all the sons you have and then jesse remembered his youngest sometimes the youngest are favorite but here i don't know why it turned the other way around <laughs> he forgot about the youngest that is still the youngest jesse answered is a contrary to you know who is it uh, jacob's story you know jacob in jacob's story the youngest was the privileged he had a coat of multi multicolored coat and uh, you know he had dreams and and all that but here this is a forgotten son there is still the youngest jesse answered but he is tending the sheep because jesse's mind was not renewed he did not think about david when the transformation of the mind comes we will know exactly what god is doing here jesse forgot his own son he forgot what god has given him he forgot what god has blessed him with so many times we we get complaining oh this is not good that is not good this is not working for me and so much of complaints we have we forget the blessing we forget what god has done in the past we fail to remember his goodness what he has done so you know if you are depressed when you are tired and confused you know, sit down and take some time off and just think and recollect and praise god for what he has done for all these years all these days right from the day we were born until today when you think back and recollect then the spirit of god will begin to work in our lives and then that extra faith will come into our life and our minds will be on god so here he says he is tending the sheep because he also thought by is you know eyes of flesh he thought david is not suitable for this because samuel is told i want you have come here to anoint one of your sons as king and because of his you know wrong mind his mindset that was only thinking about the appearance like how samuel also did earlier 
he never bothered to call david because david is only a boy he is a shepherd boy what connection is there between a shepherd boy and the king of israel he is tending sheep samuel said send for him we will not sit down until he arrives so this is again intervention of god he says and god has said this he told me not knowing the son of jesse and here all of them are passed by not any of them are suitable but one more guy is left we will not sit down till he comes if we had not asked this question samuel would jesse also has forgotten his own father has forgotten how will samuel know he also would have gone back and said maybe i need to go and pray more so many times you know before god could finish one thing we break off because we think okay this is not right let's go and do something else but he waited send for him we will not sit down until he arrives so he sent and had him brought in he was ruddy with a fine appearance and handsome features then the lord said rise and anoint him he is the one amen this is how the lord will lead every one of us so if we don't wait enough we will not have received this verse uh, 12 end of 12 if we are in a hurry to just receive the blessing and run away we will not be fully blessed god has so much of things in store for us if you are going to rush and settle for something earlier of time if we don't wait for this time that's the mistake saul did earlier samuel told him to wait i will come but he did not wait he was impatient so if we are going to get impatient with god we will not receive the right blessing we will lose a lot of things in our life but samuel waited he waited and said we will see we will wait till the youngest one comes then the lord said rise and anoint him he is one this revelation did not come earlier when the seventh sons passed by when the last the seventh one passed by god did not tell him uh, one more guy is there we will call him and then when he comes you anoint he never said that he waited samuel also was mature enough to wait and pause and said sometimes we need to pause sometimes we need to wait when we wait in the presence of god we will receive the fullness of blessing otherwise our blessing will be very very divided you know it will not be a full blessing for a full blessing we are to wait in the presence of god so when he waited then the lord said rise and anoint anoint him he is the one this is the one god already told him i am going to indicate to you it was revealed earlier to him read in verse 3 um, invite jesse to the sacrifice and i will show you what to do you are to anoint for me the one i indicate see i told earlier god does not leave us in you know ambiguity he is not a god of you know confusion he will clearly specifically say he says the one i indicate what is indicate mean mark indicate is to clearly mark mark it in red use a highlighter you know something like that so that is the way god lead us when we are seeking the lord when we are truthful to him when we obey him when we follow his word when we are renewed in our mind we cannot be renewed in our mind without the spirit of god helping us to do that otherwise we will continue in the flesh unless we have the spirit of god in us The Lord said rise and anoint him he is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on the spirit of the Lord came upon him came upon David in power then Samuel went to Rama. So until the time Samuel was there until he finished his job if God has called us to do something let's do it fully. Let's do it the way God wants us to do. God does not God is not interested in half-hearted people. God is not interested in people who will get rebellious after some time, who lose their patience and will not follow him, will not obey him. But here is Samuel. He went through a process. In the in this process of anointing David as king, see what is happening in the life of Samuel. 
Samuel is undergoing some experience. He is getting challenged at times. He is encountering God and he is hearing from God and he is, you know, learning to walk with God. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. Yes, that is how God will work in our lives. Every day is an experience with God. We should never finish a day without having an experience with God. Experience with God means not, it's not that some, you know, um, some supernatural, great, awesome thing. But just being in the presence of God, even before we hit the bed at night, if we take some time off and say, Lord, thank you for this day. I've done many right things and many wrong things. Help me renew my mind. Spirit of God, open my heart that I will hear your voice. And this place he heard it. And this is being the chosenness we read in Ephesians. How God chose us. God chose Jesse. God chose David. God chose Samuel. You know, there are so many, you know, people in this small incident. We see how many people God is dealing with. God is dealing with Jesse. God is dealing with his sons. God is dealing with David, with Samuel. So in the grand plan of God, we are all... We are all participants. We are all <clears throat> chosen by God, unique, called for a purpose, a unique purpose. So we don't have to copy each other. Each of us has got a specific calling from God that only we can do it. No one can fulfill God's plan for my life and I cannot fulfill any other plan. I cannot fulfill God's plan for my wife. I cannot fulfill God's plan. only so because we are individuals we are uniquely wonderfully created by god if we read that in psalm 137 psalm 139 sorry 13 to 16 can someone read that Amen. Hallelujah. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How amazing this is. All the days ordained for me is already written in your book. That's how God has planned the intricate details of our life. He knows every day of our life. Today is the 20th. He knows he's all, it's already written there. 20th of May Sunday morning, what should happen is already written there. 21st morning, what has to be done, what will be done, everything is written there. Nothing is a surprise for God. He has already planned it for us. And as His plan keeps getting revealed in our lives, we just have to give ourselves totally to Him and follow Him. And uh, He will bring great blessings in our life.